What's up you guys, it's D Machine, and today I am bringing you a retribution guide for patch 6.0 and on I guess. This is a guide is for Warlords of Draenor, plain and simple. It's uh, I'm coming from the beta, and uh, I'm not even really going to talk about the live patch 6.0.2 really, because um, let's just be real, it's just downright unfair. Pre-patches are always this way though, the game is now balanced around level 100 spec and stats, so anything under won't seem to be balanced uh, but anyway uh, with BlizzCon right around the corner and Warlords of Draenor to be released very soon I figured the information that I've obtained on the beta now will most likely be relevant on live in the upcoming weeks the main role of a retribution paladin is utility first then damage second so things like Hand of Sacrifice, Hand of Protection, Hand of Freedom, Cleanse, even Flash of Light and Ward of Glory are all abilities that we use not only on ourselves but on our teammates, especially if they are in CC. Now we have a Hand of Sacrifice and Hand of Protection and Cleanse so we can get our party members out of any magic effect, any physical effect, or any poison. So this covers a wide variety of Polymorph, Fear, um, Worven Sting, Warrior Fear, Stuns, Garotes. We can't get them out of Cyclones and we cannot get them out of Hexes. Um, but anything else at the moment we can get them out of. Um, so just keep that in mind and make sure that those abilities are very accessible especially when casted on your party members so using macros like uh party one two three or even um very specific target macros to your partners and and having them bound so they're very easy to get to is very important as a rep paladin um because we really we really need to get our healers out of cc to keep us offensive right so with that in mind let's jump right into the guide so let me just go over a quick overview of what has changed so far. Uh, Blinding Light is now a talent that we have to choose over Fist of Justice. Uh, there's no more Guardian, there's no more Inquisition, and there's no more Ore Mastery. But now we have Instant Sacrifice and more damage, and now Divine Storm can now be procced uh, for free. Um, and a lot of people are saying that Retribution Paladins are a lot easier now, there's a lot less buttons to push, and, and they're all right. The Paladin class, specifically just the class itself, is easier now. I'd say that understanding the rotation is a bit easier now too. Um, but the, the game is, isn't necessarily easier. Uh, it's a lot more focused now on team synergy. Uh, just because you have less buttons uh, just means that the ones that you have left are a lot more important now. We have to use what we have a lot more wisely. Also, CC throughout the entire game has been nerfed, as you all many may know. But as a rep paladin, we particularly have been more vulnerable than most other classes to CC. Um, most hybrid melees have ways to get back to their kill target after going through a fear, like a leap or a charge. Uh, but Rets don't really have that big gap closer. Uh, I mean, I've been saying this for years. We have our judgment and whatnot, but um, CC nerf is a huge buff to us. More uptime equals more holy power, more selfless healer procs. It's all good stuff. Not to mention the two set bonus on the PvP gear, if you see here. When casting Avenging Wrath, the duration of incoming crowd control effects on yourself is reduced by 50% for 15 seconds, which is basically the entire in the entirety of your cooldowns. Um, this is key to why Rhett is a top tier DPS now. You cannot peel off our wings. We are, once again, a very deadly force. So, now let's just jump right into spec. Now, just like at Mr. Pandaria, Long Arm the Law is just a really good consistent uh, speed increaser. Um, we're doing Judgment so much because of Selfless Healer, um, that it's and also because of the Glyph Burden and Guilt, that it's a, such a priority in our rotation. So, Long Arm the Law is generally always a priority to have up. So, I love Arm a Long Arm of the Law over the rest of the choices. Uh, Fist of Justice is usually going to be the choice in a longer game like in a 3v3 game with the healer the amount of cc that fist of justice short cooldown brings um 
uh, overall will bring more crowd control duration than any other any of the other choices. Repentance probably would bring a lot more CC2, but having the ability and the time to stop and cast, like I said, we don't have any gap closers as a melee hybrid, um, would, wouldn't really necessarily be ideal, especially because Selfless Healer heals other people more than it heals us, that talent spec, so we are consistently a kill target. So trying to cast something when you have a couple melee or even one melee on you, um, when you only have one tree or that includes your bubble, isn't necessarily smart. So Fist of Justice is always really going to be that choice. Blinding Light, potentially, if you're facing triple DPS, uh, the overall amount of CC after like three minutes would be uh, less amount of time if uh, you use blinding light, but it has a short period of time, it has a lot more CC. Does that make sense? Because it has a two minute cooldown, and then Fist of Justice goes back to a minute. So you have a two minute CC and a one minute CC over one 30 second CC. It might sound confusing, but basically, Blinding Light isn't necessarily going to be the top pick against any conventional 3v3 comp. Now, uh, level 45 tier Selfless Healer is King. Nothing's really changed. Internal Flame and Sacred Shield are very good, but Selfless Healer, the procs and the instant healing uh, just goes... Uh, very well with the retribution playstyle and yep there it is clemency is going to basically be a king i mean we have the freedoms we have the sacks we have the bops to get our partners out of cc and to save our partners from dying but um that doesn't mean unbreakable spirit uh won't be chosen uh unbreakable spirit is definitely a viable option if you're facing a team that has like hexes um because if that's like their main source of CC, if you're facing like Elemental Warrior, like a Thundercleave, this would probably be better. Uh, just because you um, don't need the additional damage reduction of dots, so you don't need Hand of Purity, and you don't need to bop or sack your partner out of much CC because they have Hex and Stormbolt, maybe. Um, so Unbreakable Spirit would be the next best, op next best option. Hand of Purity, obviously you're going to want this against teams that have ridiculous amounts of dot damage. It only has a 30 second cooldown, so that's actually very useful against like DK UA Warlock and things like that. Um, especially considering if it's a UA Warlock, um, sacrificing off a of UA uh, or off of Fear when they have uh, Unstable Affliction dot up on your healer probably isn't the best idea. It will silence you and hurt you. Um, but UA Warlocks don't seem very good right now, so it's still up in the air, um, but Hannah Purity definitely can be an option uh, against Dot Cleaves. So, this tier, Holy Avengers, King, plain and simple. I mean, having the, the, um, the on-demand uh, Holy Power um, generation is just key. It's so good, especially considering you're running Final Verdict. Well, I'll get to that in just a second. Execution Sentence and Holy Prism have been a little bit of a controversy. People are saying Holy Prism is better. People are saying Execution is better, and I'll give you guys my two cents. I personally enjoy Execution Sentence better against most conventional 3v3 teams, double DPS healer, and that's because against any like solid 3v3 team, um, the game is more about team synergy, so it's going to be more about making those offensive cooldowns and CC trades for defensive cooldowns. And to get those trades and to ensure yourself uh, in getting a defensive cooldown from the enemy team, Execution Sentence does a better job. Um, Holy Prism, though, overall does do more damage and it is instantaneous, but um, it I think that's a still in the same mindset as Mr. Pandaria, where you had things like in the beginning of the season where Hunters were popping BM and things were getting one shot. Holy Prism is definitely good. Uh, but I would say Execution Sentence for most 3v3 situations will be better. Because it's all about that idea of trading cooldowns for cooldowns, you know? And who has the better trade? Who's being more frugal? Things like that. Execution Sentence gets more value, in my opinion. Level 100 tier. Now, I've had so many questions about this, guys. Empowered Seals. It definitely looks legitimate. <laughs> I can tell you that much. But the amount of just pure raw damage that final verdict brings to the table just makes empowered seals like all that like uh that nit that nitpicky stuff uh just isn't there anymore and final verdict just does crazy amounts of damage not to mention the way that re mastery has been reworked um i would say uh final verdict is definitely the choice at the moment who knows changes always occur but final verdict is my choice now we are talking about 
glyphs. So, um, with the glyphs right now, Templar's Verdict is basically um, a must-have. You have 10% less damage for 6 seconds after dealing damage with Templar's Verdict or Exorcism or Final Verdict, whatever. But basically, ever since they added Exorcism, this glyph is just basically a passive 10% damage reduction because it's always up. Um, so after that, I want to talk about Hand of Freedom. Hand of Freedom is pretty amazing. It reduces CC on a target when you use Hand of Freedom on it instantly um, by 25%. And also in incoming effects for 4 seconds by 25%. So that's pretty freaking cool. And mind you, you have to remember, you can use Hand of Freedom while stunned or sapped. So you can reduce the CC on yourself in a rogue opener if they don't grow you. Or you can reduce the CC on your healer or your partner um, while they're opening on them if they sap you. So um, I'd say like um, when it comes to rogue teams and like Thug and uh, even RMP, the opener is so important for them to get defensive cooldowns out of us. And they have the ability to reduce the amount of CC. Uh, which is basically the main reason why they get defensive cooldowns um, while in CC is pretty remarkable and I do think that this glyph is going to be a permanent glyph when live arena starts um, depending on the current meta when that happens which is still up in the air but I absolutely love this glyph next glyph um, is divine protection uh, it makes your melee into or your, I'm sorry your wall into also a melee wall uh, without this glyph, your wall is just magic reduction. Divine protection is just magic protection. Um, which kind of stinks, but if you're not facing um, a uh, melee team, uh, I recommend going Burden of Guilt because 9 times out of 10, if you're facing a caster team and you want to uh, kill a caster, it it's going to be difficult connecting to them. So if you don't have someone on your team that doesn't have a passive slow uh, to keep on the kill target um, I would recommend going burden and guilt so you have that ability of uh, making up for our lack of gap closer so those are basically my glyph choices sometimes if like the CC isn't crazy um, but they have ridiculous damage output uh, instead of burden of guilt uh, or instead of uh, hand of freedom I run burden of guilt and I run uh, word of glory to increase my damage when I heal it on other people so uh, say it's a TSG and they're tunneling my healer into the ground I'll be using word of glory often on my healer to heal him and at the same time increasing my damage because most of the time if you're facing a TSG and they're training your shaman into the ground or your healer into the ground um, there is a time limit um, no matter what if they are connecting to your shaman there is going to be a certain amount of time and a certain amount of cooldowns that you can rotate through before they can end up getting the kill so having more damage and being able to slow them down with burden um, would be more ideal than having a melee wall and um, uh, a CC reduction when they're just DRing stuns on them so that's my take on that and uh, now I'll be jumping into seals and rotations so seals um, plain and simple truth is still king uh, Censure Dots does really good consistent damage and you just can't really get around that. Um, execution Sentence within your rotation should be used ideally when, um, when your cooldowns are up. Because it does um, take the current stats of when your cooldowns are up and transfers that directly into the damage of the ability. So... Um, also, when it comes to the uh, rotation, um, there's no set in stone rotation. As you can imagine, judgment is going to be a huge priority because it gives you the selfless healer, gives you the burden of guilt glyph, and it also gives you um, the additional speed from your long arm of the law talent. So judgment's priority, and then crusader, or I'm sorry, and then exorcism because it's uh, spell damage versus melee. Depending on your kill target, I mean, this is all this is all situational. But one thing that I do want to point out to you guys is that the new divine storm proc um, with final verdict it also increases the range and the and uh, uh, the damage radius of your divine storm by a hundred percent. So when you get a divine storm proc in um, you use it you have to be aware of your surroundings if you are anywhere close to a healer in CC on the enemy team it will break 
So you need to be very aware of it, but the Divine Storm damage is very good. It should be a priority, if at all possible. But, like I said, be aware of your surroundings. It's all completely situational. So, stat priority and, um, I guess, gemming. Uh, at the moment on the beta, there's no real gems. There's just enchants. And the enchants that I'm, I'm currently prioritizing mastery. Mastery scales very well with Final Verdict. And uh, it increases the damage significantly. Um, and you want to make sure, like, they have the options to go and just get all these off pieces here that don't have the set bonuses. But you really want to prioritize getting this four set piece. Uh, spending Holy Power increases the damage increased by, and healing by 3% per Holy Power spent for 8 seconds. That's fantastic, a good, consistent damage buff for a long game. Um, and so I always recommend trying to get that four set piece, but what they're going to be offer offering on live is completely up in the air. I really hope they give us this two set bonus because it's fantastic for us. Um, but at the moment, I think that, uh, um, mastery is definitely king. Um, and when you are, um, uh, getting your pieces of gear and your offsets and stuff like that, you want to make sure to get as much mastery as possible. Uh, the stat priority as it sits right now, in my opinion, are going to be strength, mastery, and then PvP power. So, um, so just go ahead and gear and enchant accordingly to that. Uh, if you don't know exactly what it is that you should be buying, uh, when live comes out, I would pay attention to Vanguard's. He's usually very meticulous and perfect about his characters. So um, when it comes to gemming and enchanting and stuff like that, he puts a ridiculous amount of thought into it because it, basically that shit's his job. So um, just pay attention to his armory. I will link it in my description below. Uh, actually, no, I won't because I'm not sure what ret he's going to be playing. But uh, I will in the future link it in the description below when I figure out what ret he's going to be playing. Um, but at the moment, mastery is definitely king. So trinkets and proc trinkets. Uh, proc trinkets are seriously overlooked right now. Um, I mean, the damage increase and the short internal cooldown on these proc trinkets are super important. Uh, you Most people don't necessarily realize this, but um, uh, figure out a way to keep track of when you receive a proc from your trinket and try to match your cooldowns with it. Um, I use an add-on called Tell Me When to do this to notify me when my proc trinket is active, but this will most likely ensure that you get a good trade of defensive cooldowns for your offensive cooldowns. Uh, or just plain and simple, you could end up killing him. I mean, uh, the human damage with a proc trinket and an unused trinket going at the same time is just phenomenal. Um, so, this is where you hear uh, the streamers complaining about ridiculous human damage. This is what it comes from. It comes from the synergy between offensive cooldowns, proc trinket, and unused trinket all at the same time. This all scales and increases your damage by a percentage base. Um, so like your execution sentence, like I've had a proc trinket on use trinket and my cooldowns up and put an execution sentence on a mage and then line of sighting the rest of my entire damage, but still ended up having to block. So that gives you uh, just an example of how important proc trinkets can be. Um, but, uh, yeah, so figure out a way to keep track of it. Viable comps. Um, so at the moment in the beta, there hasn't been really real 3v3 teams. I mean, there's been good players, don't get me wrong, but no, no one's really queuing real stuff. So um, it's still to, do be, to be determined. <laughs> I recommend you try your own theory crafting and figure out your own strat. Who knows, you could pioneer something and you could be the next vanguards. Um, but as for viability, we're just guessing here, especially considering all the changes to CC and how important CC used to be versus now. Um, my best theory crafting ideas are ret DK discs. Dis DKs bring an absurd amount of pressure and uh, rets bring an absurd amount of burst damage and uh, survivability. Uh, Disc Priests right now are one of the most aggressive healers in the game with their silence, their uh, invis their vanish, and their fears, uh, and their mobility. So, Rhett DK Disc, Vanguard's Cleave, I think is going to be coming back hot. Rhett Shadow Priest Resto Druid is another comp that I'm very interested in. Shadow Priest's damage seem to be a lot more consistent, a lot bigger damage. Um, so, and the Resto Druid obviously brings their consistent healing and buffs and their, their CC. So I think Rhett Shadow Priest Druid may very well be a thing. Um, Rhett Hunter Disc I think will still be very viable. I think that the CC that the um, a Hunter brings isn't necessarily horrible 
it's still definitely there and they have their purges uh, disc has their purges and the disc have their silence and their fears so with the new silence um, that comp can still brings a good amount of CC chaining uh, rep feral disc I think will be definitely viable feral that's just about everything that I have when it comes to composition viability so just a quick overview of retribution in this patch basically hand of sacrifice hand of freedom hand of protection all that good stuff is the same um, besides hand of freedom now reducing the uh, CC um, but uh, everything else is basically the same guys you just don't have to worry about keeping your inquisition up because it's not there anymore you don't have to worry about getting stacks of your guardian because it's not there anymore you don't have to worry about aura mastering all silences because it's not there anymore but Something that you need to be aware of is that the global cooldown of Hand of Sacrifice is off, so you can no longer spam that like a mongoloid. You actually have to use that uh, like very, very accurately, or you will use both of your Hand of Sacrifices instantaneously. So just keep that in your head. Don't use your Divine Storm um, when you are CCing the healer, because that will um, break the CC. Make sure to use your on use and your cooldowns accordingly to your proc trinket. And last but not least, have fucking fun. All right, guys, I hope this guide helped you out when it comes to uh, uh, different questions for macros and stuff like that and even add-ons just feel free to ask in the comments below with enough uh, Request I will make a separate video for that, but for now. I'll just be answering questions there I hope you guys enjoyed this guide I hope it helped you and I will see you all next time D machine blast off <laughs>